So we've got our drawing of our Nassau grouper. Now it's time to paint. What you'll need for this is a selection of brushes. Now I mainly use a three quarter inch flat and a number six round, but a few other small ones would be good. It'd be to your advantage to buy one of these sets of brushes. You can buy them anywhere between seven and twelve dollars. They've got a nice assortment for watercolor. And for paint, very often people use a tube watercolor, but because we're beginners, if you invest in a good pigment set that's in a hard palette like this set, has 12 different colors, it'll suit you just fine. And don't forget to have the selection of materials, your books, your pictures, so you can reference it when you do your painting. We're going to use our three quarter inch brush, get it wet, get some of that yellow ochre color, which is kind of a mustard color. It's next to your bright yellow on your palette. Get enough water and just move your brush all over the fish. It doesn't have to be exact. There can be some white areas. The main thing here is we want to get a base color because these Nassau groupers have a brownish yellow base to their entire body. It goes all the way to the tail. Again, just use some water. Get your brush fully loaded with that paint. It can be Some areas can be darker than others. Use the shape of your brush to show the direction. Here I'm using the side of the brush with a little more paint, a little less water. That's how we get the darker color. And I'm showing how the fins are full of the spines. Side of the brush, and I'm getting it darker over all of the fins and the lips. Keep working your brush with the paint and the water. Now I'm getting a color that's kind of a brown to get it a little bit darker. And again, using the side of my brush, I'm putting in the spines. The hard dorsal is full of spines. This can lay flat. It can also come up, whereas the soft dorsal is nowhere near as spiny. The caudal fin or the tail has different color variations. It gives it a really good look of camouflage. Anal fin too, putting in some of that dark area. It has a mottled effect look on a there are fins, and again on the pectoral fin. Putting some light lines on the top of the soft dorsal. On every Nassau grouper, they have five dark brown bars on the body. There's one, I'm putting in two. They're not exact though, they're not like somebody just put a ribbon on there. They're kind of modeled. So just get enough water so your brush is just kind of loose and drag your paint down to the bottom. There's three, that kind of joins, there's four, and the fifth one is on the knuckle. The front of the fish, covering the eyeball, we start up here in front of the hard dorsal, and there's a stripe that runs right through the eyeball to the nose. This is evident on every Nassau grouper. There's also these camouflage bands that are located on the head, around the gill covering, in front of the fins and on the lips. Make sure you have enough water on that brush so you have just kind of a splotchy look here. On the forehead, there's another line. We can't really see it at this angle, but it forms what they call a tuning fork. And that's what that dark line is on the forehead. Putting in a little bit more of that coloration that acts like a camouflage on the fins. So far, I've only used these two colors, that yellow ochre and a brown. Now, because this is a hard palette, the pigments are fairly dark, but not as dark as it would be if we were using two watercolors. So we might have to go back over it to get the colors darker in certain areas. More paint, less water, darker the color. More water, less paint, lighter the color. Now I'm defining the eye again. The eyeball will be done in black leave a little bit of a light in the center for reflection and we're going to outline the eyeball. This is done with some black and I'm also putting a little brown in it so it's not real, real black. We're also going to show how the lips are coming down. They need definition too. We don't want to outline the fish but we do need to show definition of its certain features. So do this sometimes with a broken line. Here we're doing the gill covering, and you can put a couple lines onto that. The 
way that a Nassau grouper eats is he kind of sneaks up on his prey and gulps the fish down. You can see how the lower jaw extends beyond the upper jaw, and this is for him to come right up under the fish and just grab them all in one gulp. Again, I'm mixing a little bit of my brown with some orange this time. A little bit here on the pectoral fin. And being an artist, you can add a little bit of brighter colors. Putting a little orange here on the hard dorsal with the spines on it. Remember that second and third spine is longer than the first spine. We're going over some of these a few times. We get a layered effect, which is fine. Sometimes in watercolor you don't do that, but when it comes to this fish, that's a technique we're using. Showing more spines here on the pectoral fin. And I'm showing some definition on the bottom of the fish. Again, it's a broken line. We don't want an outline effect. There's a camouflage here in the tail where we have a variation of like a yellow brown, a regular brown, a little bit of that orange, and it's broken up. When the fish are hiding among the coral or the rocks are very difficult to be seen, but this didn't prevent them to become an overfished species, which is why since 1990, they are protected. More spines in the soft dorsal. And a little darker color on the top of the fish. As you change your values here with your dark and your light, your fish will have more of a three-dimensional look to you. Be sure to continually reference your photographs. Helps with getting your colors right. I'm showing the dark area on the front head of the fish and again that dark line goes right through the eye and comes up in front of the hard dorsal. Now you can keep looking and keep adding. We're not going to go all the way to where we're doing complete detail on this but this gives you an idea. Uh, with just a few simple colors and a couple of brushes you can really create a beautiful watercolor of a fish. Enjoy today's lesson. And, uh, see what you can do when you paint these fish. We're going to just put a little bit more on here on the eye. And you can keep changing your colors using orange, brown, that ochre color coming a little more on the eyeball. And if you choose to do other fish, you can use these same techniques what colors you want to use. Remember, there is no fish in the sea of which doesn't show a color that is known to me. They're a beautiful object in order to paint because of the colors and variation. And yet the body shapes are simple, so it's not that difficult. I'm doing all this detail again with a number four round brush. spines on the anal fin and just use the very tip of your brush and you get a very fine line the harder you push on your brush the thicker the line the less you let up on it and use just the very tip the finer the line 